Hey guys, VFX Bro here. We're going to be running over some nice tutorial on the bullet time effect. We've got a lot of requests, um, so we're going to just go ahead and run through this tutorial. Um, a nice effect from the YouTube Next Step video by Final Cut King. We can see the camera kind of freezes here, pans around, and then we return to real time. So we're going to run through this really quick. The programs we're going to be using are PF Track as well as After Effects. So let's go ahead and open up PF Track. We've got another tutorial on this on the VFX Bro channel. Go ahead and check it out. There'll be a link at the end. Um, but basically, we're just going to track this shot out. A nice little tip we have here is going to be um, a lens, uh, compensating for lens distortion. So we shot on the 5D. We shot it at a, a focal length of 25 uh, millimeters and so what we want to do is uh, compensate for that lens distortion because there's a significant amount of lens distortion as you can see it's a very wide angle um, so what we did for that is we go to camera we click on lens distortion and uh, we set this to 25 up here um, it's already been done so for you it's gonna look a little bit different but set it to whatever focal length you shoot at again make sure you compensate for any uh, cropped frame image sensors um, such as the 7D um, luckily the 5D does have a full frame image sensor if you don't know what that means, go ahead and Google it. But basically, um, the uh, 25 millimeters on a Canon 5D is true 25 millimeters. So we set that to 25, and then we export the footage. And you can see here, after having exported it, that we have a nice bow here at the top. And that's to compensate for the lens distortion. So after we have that distortion fixed, we can go ahead and track through it very nicely. Pretty good track here. Um, one thing you want to remember is to put user features on the points in the scene that you'll be adding in frozen objects. So we added a fl muzzle flare to the end of the gun here. So we kind of you uh, added that user feature in. We had some explosions in the left. We had a plane up here. So we want to make sure that we're tracking those um, very precisely. And we do that by adding in user feature. So after you're done, you tag those for export, right click, hit tag for export. You can see these have been already selected. And then we're going to go to our camera exports, hit new, and then we're going to only select the tagged features. Um, and then obviously export in After Effects. If you get lost in any of this, make sure to check out the tutorial on the VFX Bro channel, which goes over PF track. Um, next, we're going to go over the process of moving it to After Effects. We have it imported here already. Um, if you don't know this process, then check out the tutorial. And um, what we're going to do now is line it up um, with the um, original footage. Um, again, also remember to change the frame rate because it'll bring it in as 24 frames per second. I want to change that to 23.976. And then we'll, let's go back to PF Track and let's take a look at the first frame that we chose to export. If we scroll over here, we can see that that was frame 44. So let's go over here. We're going to change this right here by hitting Command um, and then clicking on this too so we can see the frames. And let's just scrub over to frame 44. So that's where it starts. So we're just going to grab this section. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit more here. We're going to grab this section right here, and we're going to drag it to the beginning. Good. Very nice. Everything st sticks very well. Uh, we've got all those null objects in place now. So now the next step is just to add in our 3D. Sorry, we're going to add in our objects to our 3D world to give it the appearance of a bullet time time freeze. All right, so the first, the first one we're going to include is a dust... Um, dirt charge. So let's go ahead and import a few of these. Um, kind of a better way I like to look at the um, the effects that we have is through the finder because we can just kind of scroll through them a lot easier. So let's go ahead and go and let's just kind of run through these see which effect we like. That one's nice. That one's nice. For the purposes of this video um, I think we went with one of these. Yeah, let's go ahead and go with this dirt charge number two right here. So we're just going to drag that into After Effects. And we've got it in there. Let's just drag it on top here. And um, it matches the scene already pretty well. But what we're going to do is scroll over through here. Um, and we want it to freeze right when Zach freezes. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to parent it. We're going to copy the positioning of it to this object, right, this null object right here. So first what we're going to do is take our dirt charge, make it 3D. It'll move it somewhere else in the scene. And then we're going to select our first 
null object, which is this guy right here at the tip of the, ton at the, of the gun. Hit P so we can select the position, control C, and then paste it to this guy right here. You can see it's going to make it a lot bigger than it should be. So we're going to bring down the scale till right about there. And then now let's go back to uh, our shot right over here so we can see kind of where it would be. And um, we're going to rotate it around here so we, it faces the camera. And then we're going to move it down towards the ground here. And um, let's see how that tracks in. Not the best. Let's move it over here and down a little bit. So it's kind of where the ground would be. Now here's the key um, to making this um, dirt fly up here as if it were actually um, 3D. And so what we're going to do is we're gonna, with this selected, we're going to go to our layer. And we're going to click on transform and then we're going to go auto orient. And we're going to orient this towards the camera. So no matter where our camera is, it's always going to be facing towards the camera. Let's go ahead and rotate that again. So now, as you can see, it is wherever our camera is, it's facing towards us, um, which is very good. Um, we want it to freeze probably right around here. So we want it to be at full extension, probably uh, maybe even right here when they pop up. So we're going to we're going to scroll this through this right so that it's at full extension right about there. Um, we can move this a little over to the right and maybe even scale it up a tad bit more. So we hit S, scale it up to about 15, and uh, let's bring that up there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hit Command D. So this is the point that we want to freeze at. If we hit Command D, it's duplicated that. We're going to right click on it and we're going to go time. We're going to go time freeze frame because this is where we want it to freeze. And uh, we're going to cut that off there so that it starts there. And then we're going to bring the actual video so that it cuts off right about there. Um, so where the video stops, the frozen frame begins. So now it freezes right when we get up to that spot. And then as we move around it, it looks as though it's 3D because um, it's staying oriented towards our camera. That doesn't work with every, uh, it doesn't work with everything that you're trying to composite, but for something like this, which is a dust particle, which you can't really see that well, it's pretty transparent. It makes it look 3D, even though it's just a 2D image, just by auto orienting it towards the camera. So let's go ahead and render through this here and take a look at what we've got. Tweet, we can see that as we move around it, it appears as though the, uh, the uh, da, the ground hit has popped up. It's frozen there, and we move around it, um, and you can't really tell that it's 2D um, because it orients towards the camera. Um, other than that, um, the basic effect. I'm not going to go through every um, every element that we added. Um, a lot of it's just compositing, making sure that your your um, explosions and everything look as though they're really there, but um, the basic process just involves taking whatever you want to be in the scene and uh, copying it to the position of these various um, null objects so that they appear as though they're actually there. Again, nothing has actually been frozen on set. It's very simple. We just move around Zach. We can even see here that his hair flies up in the wind. Um, but all of this is uh, kind of faked as an illusion of, of a time freeze. Um, through the adding of these particles. When we take our muzzle flare, we're going to want to add it to this shot right here, uh, add it to this um, null object right there, and the explosions we put on the wall there. Um, all very simple stuff. If you have any specific questions, feel free to leave me a comment. This has been the VFX Bro with a tutorial in the time freezing effect.